the cross fundamentally changes how you, how you view relationships and especially the marriage relationship. The, the cross helps us to understand this, and I want you to hear me clearly. Your marriage is not about your satisfaction. Your relationships are not about your satisfaction. It, it, your, your marriage is not designed in order to enable you to be happy. Now, I hope you have a happy marriage, and I hope you have a satisfied marriage. I would certainly hope all of those things. And if not, I would hope you would seek the resources to do the best job you could at having those. If it's not, the cross fundamentally changes how you look at that. Our world says if you're not happy and satisfied, hit the eject button. Jesus said what God has joined should stay joined. Ephesians 5 indicates to us that marriage in itself was, in, in, was put together not just simply for our satisfaction because we're made in God's image and made for relationship, but also to be that demonstration of the unity of the relationship of God, both God within the Trinity and God to his church, his people. Well, what does a relationship like God to his people look like? Well, let's look in Hosea chapter 1. Hosea, my favorite prophet, was called by God to get married. And he was said, go to the ball and you will meet a princess. Right? Isn't that how fairy tales go? The Bible is no fairy tale. God tells to, to Hosea, I want you to get married. There's a prostitute. She's on the corner of Prostitute Way. I want you to marry her. And Hosea does. And he says, I want you to have kids. So they have kids. And they name one, not my people. And they name an, another one, not loved. These are not good names. <laughs> and, and, and if you read the book of Hosea, and please do this afternoon, it's a fantastic book about redemption. God is saying, Hosea, your marriage to this adulterous wife is a picture of my love and affection for my people. And, and Hosea is that picture of God's love and affection for his people. At that time, it's, of course, the people of Israel. And God is saying, this is what my love looks like. It's, it's when a man loves a woman who is not faithful. In fact, she eventually leaves, returns to her place of employment. But Hosea has to go back and pay for her to return to his home. And God says, this is what my love looks like. My love looks like a man paying for the redemption for his adulterous wife. And then in Ephesians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul tells husbands, love your wife as Christ loved the church. How does Christ love the church? He shed his blood for her. When did Jesus shed his blood for the church? Was when she was perfectly clean and spotless as the wind-driven snow? No. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. What is the picture of marriage that's informed by the cross? It's a man dying for his wife and a wife dying for her husband and the bozo doesn't deserve it. That's the image of a marriage informed by the cross. Is it fun? Sometimes. Not a lot of times. Many of you have been married too long in difficult situations. You know that the last thing you want to hear from me is your job is to die for your spouse. Like that guy doesn't deserve it. That's the point. A cross-informed view of relationships says, I die for you, and you don't deserve it. So are you saying, Greg, if I die for my spouse, he'll finally figure it out, or she'll finally figure it out, and she'll stop acting the way she does, or he will? I don't know that. There's no way for me to know that. The one thing I do know is Jesus calls us, because of his cross, to fundamentally alter how we view the relationships around us. Our relationships are not for our satisfaction and our purposes. And you say, Greg, how in the world could I possibly have relationships where I just do the dying? You cannot do that in your strength. It's, it's a result of me receiving Christ's love enough that I have enough to pass on to someone else. If I have to love my spouse, or if I have to love folks within this church, or friends of mine with my own love, then it's going to run out. Or if I have to love them and get love back from them in order to have the emotional strength to love them back, I'm always going to run out. The only way this is done is when Christ is able to love the people in our lives through us. So our marriages, our friendships, our relationships, I think the application of the principle is broader than just marriages. It's not about our satisfaction. 
It's not about our personal pleasure or significance. It's about how do I die like Jesus for the people in my life. The cross changes fundamentally how we see relationships.